Oh, all right. Hey, Trader. Sorry about that. Sorry, I was running a little bit late there. Uh, just had to step out for a second. Okay, I'm back. So let's um, let's talk about, first of all, this uh, weak inflation data. Um, hold on. I just need to put in uh, to the uh, chat that we're here. Okay. Uh, good morning, Renelio. Uh, so really quick, we were just in the chat room talking about the Aussie dollar. I, you know, I tried to short it after the, um, the inflation data when it was uh, right here at 7, uh, 77.17. And um, as it pushed through the resistance here, I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to pull it off the table because this is uh, triggering a double bottom. The Amanda was just shorting it here at uh, 7740. And I guess maybe it's because it's previous support. Um, I'm also thinking maybe it's the, you know, broken trend line that might be coming into view, perhaps. Um, but right now, to me, it seems like the Aussie might actually make a move back up towards the, uh, the 78, 78 cent level. Now, it would make a lot of sense to me um, longer term, because if you look at this Aussie, like the daily chart of this Aussie, if I had to guess, um, with stocks pushing towards new highs, we were going to do like a head and shoulder pattern eventually. So I wouldn't, I would think a move towards 78 cents in the Aussie dollar seems possible now based on what, you know, we're seeing, but you know, I think a lot of that is going to have to do with the, um, the, you know, CPI was weak. Well, and we can argue about inflation and how the Fed sees it, but we have weak inflation. Then if you have, you know, yields today, if they start to go, if the yields start to go back down and bonds bounce a little bit, that might be another, excuse me, swoon for the stock market and just uh, push us higher again. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. But as of right now, looking at the Aussie, um, you know, we have this double bottom, you know, as long as we stay above this uh, 77.25, I guess, or 20, maybe, um, that should pr press us higher. But anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's focus on right at this moment. So I'm going to just leave this here. The, this is the 24% retracement, 38% retracement comes in at 77.66. So that should be the next level resistance for the Aussie. Okay. And then beyond that, if we continue higher there, let me get rid of this. I don't think this really matters. Um, next resistance would be 78.12 after that. One of the things I want you guys to keep this in mind going into uh, going into today. One of the other things to think about is when the market is generally quiet, like from Asia, I mean, Asia on, it's been really quiet. If the market is quiet, that could really allow for a bigger breakout today in North America. So last night was pretty quiet in Asia and in Europe. You know, when I got up this morning, I'm like, man, really tight trading ranges. That means these moves could could kind of get a little wacky today. Just keep that in mind. Um, all right, going back to the Aussie dollar support here for the Aussie, we'll, we'll do the overnight lows, which will be 76, let's just call it 76.70. All right, uh, euro dollar. So I, I'm I'm really hoping for the euro to rally to 119.50 today. I have shorts set up for there, so I'm I've got orders that are waiting. So based on what we're seeing here, it seems pretty possible to me that we make our move up towards the 99.50, and that'll allow for you know some sh fresh shorts up there, in my opinion. Euro is bearish. 
Okay. Uh, support 118. Well, we'll we're going to write down the hourly lows from overnight, which will be 118.70. I'm just adjusting my mic, guys. Sorry. All right. Uh, here's the cable. So pound finally broke this downtrend line that we were flirting with yesterday. So now that we have, this should free us up to move towards 140 again. 140.13, spike high, 50% retracement. That seems very doable to me today. So 114, what do we say? 114. Uh, 13. So I'm going to say 114.10 is going to be a resistance. I don't want to put it in bullish because I, I do think we're more of a range right now um, in in the uh, the cable. Support, we're going to take this hourly low, just like we're doing the hourly lows with all the Euro, the Aussie as well. That's coming in at 138.45, which, you know, if we backed backed up towards you know, this broken trend line, it would take us near the same area. I'll just call it 138.50 for now. And that is not correct. There we go. All right. That was a typo there. Kiwi. So the Kiwi dollar has, uh, it, it looks like we're going to rally towards the 38% retracement previous support. So that would be at 72.39. And I'm going to, I'm not going to put us on bearish and you notice the Aussie I'm keeping off bearish as well. The reason why is because I think that, you know, the, like for the, if you take the Aussie, for example, you know, the Aussie made, instead of making a lower low, we made actually a higher low. So I think that the Aussie dollar is like more range bound right now, right? And with the Kiwi, one of the things about the Kiwi dollar is that the Kiwi held 71 cents, which is very, it was very important support for the Kiwi to hold. I do think we're gonna eventually break, but until we break 71 cents and, and maybe even arguably we'd have to break 70 cents, but until we break the 71 cents, I can't put it on bearish yet, right? I just can't. So resistance is 72.39. Support taking those hourly lows once again, that's going to be at 71 and a quarter, then 71. So, and you never know. I mean, Today we could get some pretty wild moves, maybe after the, the, the bond auction. Oh my God, look at the NASDAQ ripping and the Dow falling right now. It's a total bond move, guys. It's the total continued divergence between the NASDAQ and the, and the Dow. And that, it's, and, and that, um, that trend is basically, it's like that rubber band pulling away and it's pulling back, right? Uh, Alexander said, yeah, the dollar Mexican peso is going way down. You know, it's not going where I don't think it's going to go. I think it's actually going to, you know, get down here. If you take the dollar Mexican peso, you look at the analysis from last night A move back to the 200 day moving average has found some support, but expect dips at 2100 or the 2085 to offer strong support for buyers. Right. So with the dollar Mexican peso, you can see back below the 200 day moving average, I would expect that 2085 offers really great support. Remember, that was a breakout point that was major, major, major. I think that is the place that you want to be long. I was just <laughs> telling the guys in the chat room because I hadn't seen Chi in a while because he's he's he had opened a, his restaurant. And um, I was like, he was like, you still long the dollar max? I'm like, yeah, I sold a lot at, you know, 20, 2150. Um, but I'm 
you know, looking for a move back down here to add back in. So now resistance today should be, again, we're gonna take these hourly highs at 21.27. And I say while we're above 2085, it's still bullish. Okay. All right. Um, okay, let's go to dollar Canadian. So dollar Canadian, you guys know, huge support down here at 2580. I think we've written that number down a lot. I mean, resistance, 126.80, five. Pretty simple. Dollar Swiss, nice little head and shoulder pattern here. So you guys see it, right? So that would take us down to this trend line, which would be 91.60. Well, there you go. So support going to be at uh, 92.60, then 91.60. That's it. Resistance at, uh, you know, just in case, I'm, and I'm going to, I'm going to say this just in case yields do go higher today and the dollar, you know, reverses. Let's just, you know, think about a possible move to, I mean, key resistance now is going to be, oh, we got 93 and a quarter, but 93.75. Okay. I still think that this is bullish as well. Dollar, US dollar Norwegian Krona, uh, we broke minor support here, but we might get back down to 840. Resistance 851. Range bound there. We talked about the dollar max. Um, dollar yen, we have to put in bullish. Nice little head and shoulder pattern here that's also working. So that means that uh, should take us to eventually. Is it, is it gonna be the same thing like the dollar Swiss, right? So support at 108.20, then after that would be 107.50. Resistance. Basically 109. Well, I'm gonna write down 109.20 because that's that's really key, right? Because that's a big downtrend line, multi-year, okay? Come on, Euro, Euro's 25 pips away from resistance. I do think this is key, by the way. Uh, dollar index, support, 91.65. Now I know we have a head and shoulder pattern here, but I, I really do think that, you know, we might get stopped short of that in the whole index. Remember the index is not just, you know, it's, it's a lot of different currencies. It's not, you know, it's not just, you know, all Euro. So just remember that. Okay, um, 
92 and a quarter. I'm going to keep the dollar index in range. Gold was continuing its bounce. Oh my God, look at the Dow is ripping. Gold, mm, I mean, we came out of the ascending wedge. Remember, resistance is going to be a 1760. We know that. And since we came out of the ascending wedge, I got to put us back into range from being bearish. And we completed the AB equals CD. I do think dips down to 1700 are going to be supported. It's a round number. I think people feel like they've missed out on gold. So as a result, you're going to get a lot of buyers down there, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm going to write down 1700. It's it's not it's a pretty vague support, but I think around there is going to be supported. Uh, silver struggling at 2610. Remember, 2610 I think is big because 26 was the support. We are obviously just below that, but yesterday we spiked up to 2610. So let's just write down 2610. I'm going to put us. I'm going to keep us in range just because you know this breakdown almost feels like it's false but today 2550 is support and you know the move probably will happen today i mean you know it, it just probably will bitcoin uh one of the insurers, Brock said one of the insurers uh, had bought a lot of Bitcoin today. So one of these companies very soon is going to be known as the mush. You know, the trading mush, like is going to be the Bitcoin mush. Like they're going to say, we're buying Bitcoin and that's going to be the top. I don't know what company that, that is yet, but um, next resistance, I guess we got to look at 58. 58,000 support right now is 52,000. I don't want to put it in bullish right now. I, I really think we're just kind of ranging between this 40,000 and 60,000. But today, 52,000, 58,000. And then S&P. Uh, we're obviously struggling with 3,900 3, again. What to do, what to do, what to do. I guess we put in 3,915. Yeah, I really am not sure what to write here because we're just challenging resistance and I don't want to put resistance at current prices. But uh, I guess I'll have to do this 39.20. I mean, I have to just because that's going to be the spike high from the 78% retracement. Support right now is going to be 3,800 on dips. It's just not, I mean, we're just basically challenging resistance right now. So there's your range. Um, all right, so you're done, or I'm done with that. And look at the NASDAQ coming down, Dow's going up, God, continued divergence between those markets. Uh, Steve Stelios, good morning, guys. How are you? I'm good, I'm here. I'm not sure if Steve's here yet, but okay, well, that's good. Then that he gives you that gives you an opportunity to actually say something. Yes. Yeah. For once. Okay. Well, no, yeah, I'll gonna, take the screen. What are you, what did you want to talk about? Because I'll let you take over if you want to show something. Yeah. 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 I'll take the screen as well. And uh, hold on. Share screen. Okay. So first of all, we had the CPI print um, 
just a little while ago, came in within point one of expectations. So nothing, nothing major. It's interesting because how, I've how been... great is that? It's like uh, no inflation yet. I went. I was staying in the chat room. I went to uh, fill up our truck with yeah. gas yeah. yesterday, and I, and I hadn't thought about it, but I, I just realized that it, it cost me about an extra ten dollars to fill up my tank versus a few months ago. I'm not sure exactly when. Last yeah. time, you know, last time I like registered in my head, oh, you know, I filled filled the gas tank. I mean, at what point is the, the is is that going to start to impact consumer spending? It it will eventually, you know, it, it, it's starting already, and it will. What I was reading and I was laughing, it was there's like a debate on Twitter and other platforms about inflation, and half the people say, look, there is no inflation. And the other half say there's huge amounts of inflation. And, and the argument is, oh, everybody has been warning about inflation and hyperinflation in the U.S. since 2010, you know, after the first, you know, the bailouts and the monetary easing. And look, right. nothing's, there's no inflation. And I'm like, okay, let's compare 2010 to today. Let's compare what you buy in the supermarket, you know, how much stuff can get with 100 bucks. Let's compare your education costs, your health care. Let's look at the average wage the average annual income of the average worker, which is unchanged since 2010, from 2010 to now, or actually might be a little bit lower, but anyway, it's unchanged. And look at the average uh, price of uh, property or look at the average stock or bond indices. You know, it's just inflation is everywhere. And people just say, no, there is no inflation. I mean, any way you look at it, everything is more expensive, at least the stuff you need to live. And uh, it just it just drives me crazy when people say, no, look, there's no inflation. Well, you know, what do you mean there's no inflation? Everything is, is higher. Well, so, that's what uh, that's what she in the chat room was saying. Just and he's he kind of pops in and out because he's he's opening. He opened yeah. a restaurant. So he's like kind of back and forth. He's like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to buy a, a Tesla. I'm thinking about buying a Tesla because it's cost too much driving back and forth for my restaurant. And it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, wow. How can the Fed continue to say there's no inflation? Since he's a nice guy, my personal uh, suggestion would be not to buy a Tesla and buy yeah, an buy, equivalent. Buy, buy another electric car, yeah. Yeah, an Audi, <laughs> an Audi, for example, or yeah, something else indeed. Why? Because... It's a long conversation, Steve. Let's not get into that. It is a long most, it, No, no, the, the answer is very simple. Because the difference of quality of build is night and day. Yeah. And probably... Uh, night and day doesn't depict it enough. What, what are you talking about? Do you, do you not think that Teslas are made well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. You, I think I think you know she's right though. You know, it's getting more and more expensive to um, to do stuff, and uh, you know, people who think there's no inflation. You know, I've said it before. I think we're going to see three-digit crude again. Yeah. Absolutely. That wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're right, back, well, Steve. I'm gonna, okay. Hey, guys, I'm going to let you guys take over. Um, but, uh, but hey, thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll see you guys all in the chat rooms. And um, good luck today. Thank you, Blake. Thank you, mate. Thanks, guys. So Bye -bye. Equities, equities rallying, risk on again. And there we uh, go, Stelio. Yeah. There we are. Here's the S&P. Testing this trend line resistance, uh, you know, as I said yesterday and as I said earlier today, I think it's, you know, a lot likelier that that's what's going to happen next. Uh, yeah. So probably another leg higher. I mean, <laughs> obviously not much of a surprise. It's not the first time or the last time, I'm assuming. Here are some upside targets as well. Um, 4,030, they won 27% extension. So, you know, this is the last line of resistance for the bears, in essence. I mean, you know, if this is to be a rally within a larger correction, you know, this is this is where it needs to turn lower. So, you know, if you really believe, you know, we're headed lower from here, this is a magnificent entry point to be short. But, you know, I think it's very, very likely that, you know, we're headed higher. And here's the Nasdaq, by the way, on the four hour chart once again. Uh, testing confluence of resistances. So, uh, you know, a little bit different formations, uh, but, uh, you know, substance remains the same, being both uh, these indices are testing um, key resistances for the trend. 
So, you know, we break yeah. higher. We've probably already put an end to the corrective move lower. Yes. What else do we have, mate? Uh, do, do we have anything we didn't mention? Uh, no, not really. No, we talked about the data. We talked about Norway. We talked about oil. Nothing, nothing new. The uh, Bank of Canada is in 15 minutes, but... I don't think we'll get much. Yeah, there. I, I doubt we're going to get you know something groundbreaking or something. The, the ECB yeah. tomorrow is you know that could be interesting. The press conference, you know, it's always uh, it's always an event to uh, to keep an eye on. But really, I don't see much. At least not. By today. by the way, probably not coincidentally, but if you look at crude oil, right, seems to be. Mm. also doing the same thing as we speak yes okay so let's have a look at shorter term charts since there is nothing really magnificently happening since yesterday here is gold we talked about the potential of a descending wedge we've already shown the daily picture which is extremely important because we know that gold so far on the daily found support in this key confluence of um, uh, levels. So, you know, uh, a really, really uh, important area for the bulls to hold. And so far, you know, they've, they've done really well in holding it. Um, on, the, on the four hour chart, as we saw, um, we've formed and broken through um, a descending wedge. So, you know, I, I'd have to say that, you know, for the time being, it seems like we had a decent start. Uh, let's see if we can get some continuation. Silver um, built something like a double bottom, like at 25. Um, you know, in any case, it was diverging with gold for a long period of time. I mean, gold was pushing to new lows while silver was far away from doing something like that. So that on its own might have been, you know, a very strong indication. Here is platinum. Look how it looks exactly like the Nasdaq, like the like crude oil, right? Uh, I mean, you know, we break higher from here. I think uh, we're looking at new highs. Here is copper, same formation, right? Not coincidentally. Here is nickel. I said it before, and I'll say it once again. Nickel looks, you know, very very different. Looks very heavy. I think that if one thing is moving lower, uh, it's this. Here's natural gas has slowed down its pace of moving lower. Look at the RSI. RSI at, at a healthy level despite the move lower. I think natural gas is probably not uh, far away from building a bottom. I, I would have to say anywhere between here and 245, we should um, uh, turn higher. Um, we talked about the knock for me, important formation. We break through the lows. I think next stop is going to be at eight. I remind you that at this parabolic move higher, we had moved above 12, right? In, in my opinion, I said it much, much earlier when we had crafted this. This is probably a generational high in the USD knock. I don't expect that there are high chances that I'm going to see that level ever again in my life. Um, use the sec build something like a corrective channel we had a little bit of an overthrow but we're back within it so likely a false breakout let's see so as you see you know the vast majority of the charts are telling the same story the euro is telling the same story as use the sec we had this channel you know half a day of a breakdown from this channel back within the channel once again um, so, you know, they, they, they look exact, it's exactly the mirror image of use the sec, or if you wish, use the sec is exactly the mirror image of, of it. Here's the cable in what looks like a pennant. Oops. In what looks like a pennant, which we might be about to break higher from. So as you see, <laughs> you 
you know, obviously not coincidentally, so many markets, right, are building the same type of formations because, you know, all this intervention has in essence made the vast majority of the, market, of the markets a single market, right? I mean, you know, FX is now so much correlated with uh, risk um, assets. I mean, you know, there was always some correlation, but you know, it has it has been pumped up to to extreme. Uh, Renilo is asking for the Aussie yen. Yes, we can. Yeah, we can have a look at some of the yen crosses. Actually, it's not a bad idea. <coughs> so Aussie yen. We had this channel, we broke above it, uh, likely consolidated for a little bit and we seem to be breaking higher once again. Kiwi Yen, consolidating near the highs. You know, the only thing that troubles me with these pairs is that there is a, a big, big, very prominent RSI divergence. So, you know, momentum is waning quite a lot. Other than that, Structurally, they look very, very healthy, all of the yen pairs. And if you look at USD yen, I mean, undeniably, it has produced a move that looks for the time being impulsive, right? I mean, as long as we, we held within this channel, you know, we started breaking through some resistances, but, you know, the move higher was orderly. So it could have been, you know, part of another corrective move. But the acceleration, once we broke through that, and the fact that RSI hit overbought levels, seriously overbought levels after a long period of time, you know, they're both bullish signs. So I have to say that, you know, most likely the yen has more to go, you know, might need, might need, uh, you know, somewhat of a pullback at some point, but I think that it has more to go. Uh, uh, platinum, we did cover platinum, mate, just like two minutes ago. And I assume that that's Russell, the Russell you want. Where is it? Here it is. IWM. Breaking higher. From... Probably an expanding triangle it was. There it is. Same type of formation that the S&P is building, right? So, yeah. It does look, though, in both cases, and they have to reiterate that, that after we get a new high, which we will likely get, there is still going to be a lot of RSI divergence. So my gut feeling is telling me that the chances of seeing a higher high are much higher than not at the moment. But there are also very good chances that that higher high is going to be followed by a deeper correction because we didn't get a deep correction in this case. Um, so, you know, we are seeing legitimate breakouts. But for the reason I just mentioned, I would not be buying these breakouts. Okay. Because I still think that we don't have uh, appealing risk rewards, quite the opposite. Look at the FTSE. FTSE is still so extremely heavy. Yeah, I know. I know. The pound uh, strength is definitely having something to do with it. There's no question about it. But, you know, looking at the FTSE, it might as well still be building a head and shoulders formation, right? I mean, it still hasn't lost symmetry. So, yeah, FTSE definitely looking much worse than the rest of the indices. I can tell you that much. Hi, Steve. Can you look at Micron Technology and Freeport, McMore, Run, FCX, and MU? Sure. MU. I would have assumed MU could have been Manchester United. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, listen. Uh, I think this is a dangerous place to be. Definitely a parabolic market that has been very, very, very bullish. But look at this RSI divergence. And look at this momentum loss. And look at this potential ascending wedge. I, 
I, I wouldn't be buying this until I got something like this, a deep correction. I, I think this is a very dangerous market. It's the type of markets that can really collapse, uh, you know, with almost no notice and finally produce some type of a you know healthy corrective move before we we go higher that's what i think about it uh too bullish and too vertical uh, to be able to buy here uh, until, until it you know produces some decent correction fcx same deal exactly same deal here although i have to say that in the short term exactly like the indices we saw it looks like it's building. Look at how much it looks like the S&P, right? Some kind of an expanding triangle. So I would have to say likely to get one more high with a lot of RSI divergence, right? Likely to get one more high here with a lot of RSI divergence. And then a much bigger corrective move lower before you can consider it an opportunity to get involved with something like this. Uh, I, I wouldn't be considering buying it unless it came back towards 25, personally. I mean, no matter how I like the company, I would, I would wait. I, I think you're going to get this level to buy at some point, uh, 25. Uh, AMC, AMC. Looks like a bubble that has burst, if you're asking me. So I, I, I would think that, you know, this is going to soon be sold once again. Uh, I don't think it's going to be going back to 20, if you're asking me. Uh, and, even, and even if it is, I don't think it's going there before it can have, you know, a very decent move lower first, you know, at least one more decent move lower first. So I wouldn't be buying this. Uh, anybody else anything? Going once. Going twice. Stelio, you? Any requests? No, I'm good. Okay. Right. So, okay, there we, there we go. We got the last minute one. Uh, SDGR. No idea what it is, but this is an ugly. Ooh, this is an ugly gap followed. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. This was at support, and I'm assuming earnings did the job. Yeah. And following earnings, it just gapped lower. Um, any rebound should be sold here, if you're asking me. Uh, areas of interest, 80, 84, the high of the day of the gap. Uh, that low then 84. You know, I, I, I think this has more to go to the downside. Uh, will you be sticking around for Canadian data? Sure, if you wish. Uh, we, we can watch them together, although I have to tell you in advance that I'm not expecting anything really to happen. Let's have a look at USDCAD. So USDCAD, as I uh, explained before, um, he has been riding this trend line resistance. And, you know, really, I can't find myself being bullish as long as this resistance is holding. Now, we break through this resistance and, you know, at least we register a technical event that we can, men, you know, we can talk about, right? Until that happens, there is, you know, other than momentum divergence and, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, the down um, trend has waned, um, you know, there is nothing to, more to say. So, you know, we break higher from there. We do open the door for a move closer to 130. Uh, closer to this area of resistance, 129, you know, 70, whatever it is. But we get rejected from here. And in my opinion, we're going for a lower low. We're, we're headed towards 123.50. Now, um, will the Canadian data, uh, you know, move the market one way or the other? It might as well do. 
uh, we have a request for NVIDIA, NVIDIA, but the ticket is NVIDIA. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, another parabolic market. But this is, look at this. Right. Very dangerous break breakdown, if you're asking me. Uh, I would have to say risk reward definitely, definitely favors shorts here. I, I don't think this move lower is it's too impulsive to be the end of it. I mean, nothing is impossible, but not very likely. I, I think that, you know, you, sh you should watch this area like around 527 as resistance. Uh, might as well work out nicely for another leg to the downside. And Qualcomm, uh, Dimitri, uh, what is the... Whoop. It's Qcom. 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 I think more or less the same thing. A market that that has clearly broken down. You know, after a period of divergence, uh, a very decent corrective move so far, but doesn't look to be over. If you're asking me, it is. You know, it is promising for the bulls the fact that it found support at the 200 DMA, and I think technically that's what did the job. But my assumption is that it's going to have a hard time going through this area. So, you know, probably something like that, I would assume. So, uh, Canadian data, any second now, let's see, 20 seconds to go. Wait, let me pull USD card. It's just the data and the statement. There's no Q&A or anything. Yeah. So, I'm going to guess unchanged rates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly unchanged. Mm -hmm. So far, the market is yawning. Yeah. Mm. Yep. We might as well watch grass grow. Yeah. Four pips. Yeah. Okay. Non event. Despite the stronger near term outlook, there is still considerable economic slack and a great deal of uncertainty. Uh, about the evolution of the virus on the path of economic growth, in essence, reiterating what every single central bank has been telling us. So nothing, you know, that the markets would really take a cue from to act one way or another. The market seems to have had enough time, at least the algos, to digest the information and it doesn't seem to care. But... As expected, the S&P does look like it is breaking higher. Uh, and I, I, I do tend to believe that this is a legitimate breakout. So I do think that even incrementally, we should form a higher high. Let's FIB extend this corrective move lower and see where the target would be. Four thousand and thirty is the one twenty seven extension. Thirty nine sixty four, almost sixty seven was the high. So, yeah, four thousand and thirty. There we go. Most likely, unless we see like a big reversal within the day. I, I doubt it. But if we do close above this trend line resistance, I think that you know next stop is four thousand and thirty. Great. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much for all that. Okay, uh, one more Disney. Oh, somebody had sent it. They didn't see it. Uh, okay, we finish up with Disney. Disney, Disney, Disney. Now, if I had no idea, I would have assumed that something had happened and Disney was opening more parks or something. Having said that and having joked about that, 
I think that Disney that doesn't look that healthy up here. I think it's like an airplane that's run at, you know, its engines at very thin air and they're probably starved from air. And something tells me that we are about to stall and this might be a very, very nasty turn lower for Disney. Might be one of these by the rumor, sell the news, by the rumor that the economy is going to recover and everything is going to be perfect and sell the news type of thing that should at least probably fill this gap, I'm assuming, at 155. So, yeah, that's what I think about Disney. Okay, have a wonderful rest of the day, guys and girls. Bye-bye. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everybody.